Good morning. Number three. Good morning. Good morning. All right. I'm always going to say good morning to you because it is a good morning. Every day that we come is a morning that the Lord has given to us. That's right. Every breath that we take is another breath that the Lord has given to us. So I don't want to take the small things for granted. I want to keep everything to know it goes to, to Jesus. Amen? Amen. Every breath, every strength, every blessing, every child, everything is because of him. Amen? Amen. It's not because of me. It's not because of you. It's because of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says that the glory of his, his train, of his robe, would fill the entire temple. His Amen. glory fills the entire earth. Amen? Amen. His glory fills everything. Every being, every fiber, it is him and him alone. Amen? But sometimes we forget this. And sometimes we don't remember this. So that's why we constantly say it over and over and over again because faith comes by hearing the word. If you don't hear it, you have little faith. Amen. The more you hear it, the more you can increase in faith in whatever the word says. Amen? Amen. Okay, we're going to go to the book of Nehemiah. We're not going anywhere else right now. <laughs> Nehemiah. So I, I saw some faces. <laughs> book of Nehemiah. When you're there, please say amen. Amen. The book, <laughs> we're going to get through it, okay? Because I really believe it's not, it's not about how fast we go. If we had two hours, we could get, we could, we could get more done. Amen. But we got a certain amount of time. We're getting much done we, we have, okay? It's not about how much you get done. It's about how much you can understand it. Okay? It's about the quality, not the quantity. I can go past it real fast, but it's about the quality. Why? Because you have a quality about yourself. Jesus has declared the quality of you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, man. We're going to be in uh, chapter 5. We don't stay there very long. We chapter five. Chapter five. You have a quality about yourself. The quality is that God said you're made in his image. And the quality says that he loves you and he died for you. He's given, given us the keys of heaven and earth. Amen? Amen. Okay. <clears throat> Can you there please say amen? Amen. amen. Nehemiah chapter five. We're going to go a couple other places, but not too much. All right, we all there. And yeah, let's bow our heads in prayer. Well, gracious and heavenly Father, first in the mighty name of Jesus, we're going to thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your mercy, your grace, your goodness, your kindness. Father, we thank you for your long suffering. We know that all things will work together for those who love you, who are called according to your purpose. Father, let us, let us take hold of your word and believe it upon faith. Father, let us not to be distracted. Let us not to allow this opposition to discourage us. But to stand strong in your word, knowing that you are God that heals, you knowing that you are God that redeems, knowing that you are God that works all things for good because of your great love. Father, let us, let us focus on you. Let us focus on the good news. Let us focus on your power. Let us focus on who you are, Lord, and not to believe the lies of the enemy. Yes. Lord, we thank you. Let us just come with thanksgiving. Father, if we don't even know what else to say, let us come with thanksgiving. Just say thank you for another day. Yes. Thank you. For, for our family. Thank you for everything. And so we can come to you in the right spirit and right heart. <clears throat> Father, let this Sunday school lesson be a blessing to every ear that hears. That every person who receives it can see with their own eyes and their hearts to begin to understand and get grounded and rooted in the word of the living God which endures forever. Father, hide me behind the cross and let them see. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. 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 All right. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 5. I get excited. You know, you open the Bible, you say to talk about God's word, I get excited. The reason why I get excited, because I know I'm talking about something that lasts forever. Amen. Amen. I, can, I used to talk about a lot of temporary things. That's right. And a lot of times I talked about it, right? But now I talk about the things that last forever. And I'm looking at people who will last forever. Amen. Amen. That's right. I'm looking at people who will. No, not, not maybe. Who Honestly. will last forever? That's now, right. And the question in this world is always the same. Where? Where? That's okay. right. We just be honest. That's, that's, that's the biggest thing. Amen. Heaven, they last forever. We know their glorious place. Hell, they last forever. We know their hideous place. In this place, we have a choice. I'm looking at people who will last forever. Yeah. I want to say that. I want you to hear that. Okay? <laughs> Because I've heard people say you're just a blob of tissue. Yeah, we've heard that. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't either. 
Okay, I rebuke that. Amen. 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 You rebuke Jesus. it too. Preach it. Uh, okay. Preach I'm being honest. That's right. I'm being honest. I'm telling you, we're talking about. I'm looking at people made in God's image because his breath, Woo. listen to his breath, God's breath yes. will never die. That's right. You will live forever. The question is where? We come here together. We come here today. So we say and declare we live together in heaven. Amen. That's the goal. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. I don't hear you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, let's keep going. Now, in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 5, we talk about the oppositions. Understanding. We, all of us are going to, we want to do the work of God, right? Yes. Doing the work of God, but there will always be yeah, opposition in life. <clears throat> in the book of Nehemiah, we're looking at it. He was a man of God. All of us, all of us, have, have made a statement this time, I'm going to do the work of God as a Christian. But he had to endure, one, mocking. People are talking about it. Yep. Number two, he had to endure threats on his life, attacks, threats. Number three, he had to endure discouragement, what would come. And number four, we're going to talk about, is that he had to endure what's called extortion, or people begin to abuse their authority illegally, or take stuff illegally. Mm. I'm going to tell you what happened. You go back and read chapter 5 for yourself. But what happened was a famine came on the land. Distress came. Tribulation came on the land. And when it came, then the people had to, they didn't have the money. They had to sell a mortgage off their homes just to eat. And when they did this, they put themselves in a burden, in a hard situation. Now, within their own family, their own people, the Jewish people, what they did was that they paid it off for them, but they, they charged them a great big high interest rate. In other words, they took advantage of the people in a, in a bad time. That's what happens. Okay? They're doing the work of God together, but then a famine came. Look at that. You got three oppositions, and a famine comes. Three oppositions, a famine, I just sell everything off, then they're going to take your children. That's what's going to happen. They would take your children back in those days. Amen. And they put them in slavery. So they charged them such a big high interest rate. They put them into one bondage to another, and it was hurting them bad. Nehemiah comes and say, don't do that. That's not right. So what happens? Yeah. He just said, don't do that. That's not right. So you see the, another opposition. That's called, it could be discouragement again. So Nehemiah, the man of God, comes and tells them, don't do that. Take that off. And they listen to him. And they didn't do it. That's chapter 5. Nehemiah himself also became a good example because Nehemiah could, because he was with the governor, his position, he could have lived a, a better life, but he chose not to. Amen. Nehemiah chose. He wanted to be, Nehemiah, listen, wanted to be an example. The same, a good example. The same thing we teach about us. Let us be an example in different ways. I'm not saying Nehemiah in Nehemiah's way. I'm saying let us be an unselfish good example so one can see. Amen? Amen. Amen. We all need example. Yes, we do. We all need example in different ways. Let us be as a Christian a good selfless example. Yes. Because Amen. the Lord will show you that. Amen? Amen. You may have a group. You may be in a certain group that you need to be that example for that group. And I can't be that example because I don't fit that. But I may need to be a good example for this group over here. Amen? Yes. So they can see a good example as a child of God. That's what it is. That's chapter 5. Amen? Amen. Amen. Does that, that make sense what it says? So, so look at all the opposition of doing God's work. Because the enemy, let me say this, I want you to hear this. The enemy whole goal is to stop you to do his work. Amen. And he does. Mm. But we have to say no. Yes. We will continue to do his work. We continue in faith. That's why. What pleases God? Faith. faith. What pleases God? Faith. faith. Faith means trusting Him through the difficulty times. I don't know what's going to happen, but we'll have faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. I got faith. I got faith. I'm going to believe. I'm going to believe. I'm not going to stop reading my Bible. I'm not going to stop coming. I'm not going to stop praying. I'm going to keep coming regardless. Amen? Amen? Amen. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going to keep coming. I know that he can hear me. Yes. I know that when I pray to him, he answers, he's going to answer me. Yes. How are he going to answer me? I don't know. But I believe. Wow. Amen? Amen. When he's going to answer you? I don't know. But I know he will. Amen? That's right. Okay, That's this right. is what it comes down to. And this is what we're going to encourage one another. Nehemiah is very encouraging. 
God won't tell you when. He won't tell you how. He said believe. Amen? Amen. Anybody have anything like to say first? That's chapter 5. We're going to go to chapter 6. We're fast. Anybody have anything? I always going to encourage you. Remember, I want to say this. Keep the faith in the word of God in Jesus. Be a good example for whatever group that God has put you in. Be the good example. Amen? Amen. Chapter 6. Chapter 6 is another opposition. Here's what we're going to take a little time to talk about. Compromise. Mm. This is the opposition number 5. It was compromise. Let's go and read this one. Could would somebody read verses uh, 1 and 2, please? Now when Sambat and Tobit and Gisham gave there, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall, and that there was no breach left in it. He said, although up to that time they had not set up the doors and the gates yet. But Sambat and Gisham sent to me, saying, Come and let us meet together at Ascalon in the plain of Honon. But they intended to do harm. Okay. To do me harm. Okay. So what do we see here? The first thing we see, the enemy is hearing that the work of God is, is being done, still being done. The enemy is looking, look at, watch this, in today's time. The enemy is still watching you coming to church, mm -hmm. praying to the Lord, reading your Bible, having faith. He's, he's hearing this, and he doesn't like this. And remember the enemy come in two forms. Form number one is a person with a body. in bodies. And form number two, form number two is persons without, bodies. without a body. Talk to your mind, okay? You need to understand that. He will come two ways. He can send people. I can come, and I can be talking to you, and I can be the person he's using in the body. Or he can have some thoughts, and that's not his thoughts. That's the enemy speaking to him. The only way for him to know which one is which is for the word of God to tell him that's not, that thought is not right. The word of God will tell you that thought is not of God. Yes. Get out of me. Amen? Amen. Amen. Make sense? It does. You don't receive that thought. The word of God will direct you. Amen? Amen. Okay. So we're looking here, and we're seeing that he's still building the wall. He's closing in the gaps. When you <clears> close <throat> the gaps to build the wall, you're kicking him out. He doesn't like that, but this is what they decided to do. Verse 2. Verse 2 says, And Sambalot and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the, one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do mischief. They wanted him to stop and talk. It sounds innocent. They wanted him to stop doing mm -hmm. the work of God and just come over here and hang out, hang out and talk with him. Chill out. That was a tactic of the enemy. Mm -hmm. He didn't want them to continue to do God's work. He didn't want that. He mm -hmm. wanted to say, stop for a moment. Why don't you stop this and just come talk to me? But, they, but in their minds, they wanted to do wrong to them. He wanted him to compromise on what he's talking about. He wanted him to not to continue in God's work and to compromise and come over here and just to talk for a moment. <coughs> you see that? It sounds innocent. But what did Nehemiah say? Somebody read verse 3. Look at what he said. Somebody read verse 3. But they were scheming to harm me, so I sent messengers to them with this reply. I am carrying on a great project and cannot go down. Why shouldn't the work stop while I leave it and go down to you? Read verse 3 again. But they were scheming to harm me, so I sent these messengers to them with this reply. I am carrying on a great project and cannot go down. Why should the work stop? While I leave, yeah, let's go down to you. You see what Nehemiah said? No. Remember I said one of the, sometimes the most powerful word you can say is two, two, two letters? No. no. <laughs> say it again. No. <laughs> say it again. No. Sometimes the powerful, powerful thing to say is say no. Nehemiah said, I am doing a great work. You are doing a great work when you read your word, when you're praying. When you're doing the things of God, when you come into church, you are doing a great work in the kingdom of God. Do not believe the lie that is not profitable. It's a great work in God's kingdom. Amen? Amen. 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 This is the work in the spirit that we're doing. But some people are going to say, oh, don't you stop? You got to go to church. <laughs> you got to go to church, right? Come on here and talk to me instead. Right? And you know, 
You know what? Why are you going to spend that time with that Bible at home? Man, you can, hey, stop doing that. Just come over here and hang out with me. Amen? Amen. Am I telling the truth? I try. This is a part of what the enemy does. Now, the person may not know what they're doing, so we're not blaming the person. We're just blaming the enemy. Okay? But Nehemiah said he counted what he was doing as a great work. You must see what you're doing as a great work. Amen? Amen. You must see that prayer is a what? Great work. Great work. It is. You must see work. prayer is a great work. I'm not hearing anybody respond to me. Okay. You must see prayer as a great, great work. work. Okay. You must see reading the Bible as a great, great work. work. You must see going to church is a great, great work. work. You got to see it that way. Amen. That's right. How your perspective has to be. Amen? Amen. Not what the unbelievers and you know, lukewarm people feel. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that making sense? Yeah. You must see these things as a great work. As a great, great work. work. And not allow someone else to say, hey, stop that and come talk to me. That's right. That's I'll talk to you when I get finished. Amen? Amen. I'll talk to you when I get finished. Or you come with me, one or the other. Either help me or I'll, I'll talk to you when I get finished. Amen? This, this is what Nehemiah, he is a man of God, was speaking, right? Yeah. And sometimes we don't do that. Well, that's why the Bible is for correction, it's for reproof, it's to get us in line, show us the right way. Okay, it's not for condemnation, but correction. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. I had the opportunity, actually me and my sister had the opportunity to interview a man. He is a ex, I say word ex, very make sure I say it. Ex drag queen. And he got a hold of Jesus. Amen. He gave a testimony. It's on our page. And the testimony is beautiful. When you can hear all the things he's been through and hear about his love for Jesus. Amen. We got part one, two, and three. Okay? Personally, we actually, we, we don't. Okay? We love the guy. Okay? But his testimony, also part of his testimony, was about parents. Okay? And I'm going to tell you about it. You want to see, you go, go check it out. Okay? But part of it was saying, this is what the Lord has said to his parents. If you compromise on the word, you take away the power of the word. Let me say it again. When we compromise on the word, <coughs> we, we take away the power of the word. You, amen? amen? If Nehemiah would have compromised hmm. of the good work, the, the wall would never got built and everybody got discouraged and ran away. It will take away the power of the good work. Amen? Is that making sense? So that's why I wanted to share with that. I want to show you something else, one, one thing in the scripture. That's why the Lord said, don't compromise on the word. Let his word do the work, not you. I talked to another young man last night, and I can tell you the whole conversation. But one thing he said was that he felt that he was being a savior, helping people. I said, you're not the savior. You got to let the word, what, do the work. the work. The work. You got to not compromise on the word and let the word do the what? Work. Do the work. That's Jesus' job. Amen. He's Amen. the Savior. So, once again, so his parents, so he said, the Lord said to his parents, you want to see the whole thing, which I pay, put the buttons on YouTube. <laughs> what it said was, when you compromise on the word, you take away the power of that word. Right. So instead of that word having power to it, <coughs> it's just words of okay. Amen? Amen. We'll go to a place. Can we go to Second, Second Timothy, please? Second Timothy, chapter 3. When you're there, please say amen. Amen. <laughs> I got a fast amen. I like it. Okay. This is the Lord, the, the word teaches us and inspires. Yes, sir. Um, also, like, you keep it on the material that you use to fill in your house. They don't last very long. So it, it, it makes a weakness in the structure. <laughs> so it won't be able to stand as long. I'm doing inspections for Terminix Monday. You can tell where they cheaped out in certain areas of the house. Mm -hmm. Or you can tell what, where they rushed it or they tried to put in stuff that didn't belong because that's also the time where all the trouble always started. That's good. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. That's good. Anybody anything else? Like Sunday school, good chance to have a conversation, good chance to talk, good chance to express. Amen? Amen. Okay, we can take our time. We're not in a rush. <laughs> okay, are y'all there? Second Timothy chapter 3. I want someone to read 
verse 5. Mm. Well. <laughs> Having a form of godliness, but the not of the fire have nothing to do with such people. Okay. Listen to what it's saying. They have a form of godliness, but you're, the, you're not allowing the power. You hear that? Denying the power of God to work. You see that? When we compromise on the word, what do we do? We take away the power of the word. Well, also we take away faith. That means we don't believe in God. If we step in, if we say we believe a situation and we get impatient and we feel like I got to do it, that's not pleasing God. But God says that it's impossible to please him or to have him to move if you don't trust him. So if we step in, we're actually saying, well, God, I don't think you can do it. I'm going to do it for you. Try. And that's why the situation doesn't happen because we're always interceding, always stepping in because, because of our thoughts about how we think it should happen. God said he didn't, say, he didn't ask us to understand everything. He asked us to believe and to trust and let him do it. <laughs> Well, isn't that some good news that we don't have to understand everything? Amen. That's right. <laughs> is that some good news that we don't have to understand everything or know everything? Amen. What if we had to understand it and, and know everything for something to happen? How, what position would we be in? <coughs> Worse than the one we in there. <laughs> right? So he didn't say you have to understand everything, right? He didn't say you got to know everything. He says, believe and try right. in faith. Amen? Amen. Okay. I'm going to say this. Yes, ma'am. Verse five, the end of it, it says, "Avoid such people." Why do that's good? Okay, conversation time. <laughs> Why do we believe the, that the scripture says to avoid such people this way? Because oh, okay, cause confusion. Uh huh. <laughs> because a lot of times we're not strong enough, we tend to adapt. We tend to adapt to believe in lack of power. Other people. Come on. Instead of saying strong. Yes, amen. That's good. Come on. I'm going to come back to you for you ready. <laughs> I'm get a little creeping over here, too. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Anybody else? If you compromise with a word, you take the truth from that word. That's right. And when you be around that type of person, what would happen? You tend to do what? You tend to follow with him. There, I knew it coming. Amen. You tend to do the same thing. You you, you tend to believe, in the word don't we have power to do that? Well, come on now. Tell you don't truth. believe it? <laughs> I don't believe it either. Let's be real, right? That's true. But if you be around somebody who believes in the power of prayer, and they're always praying, 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 what are you going to do? Pray. Right. If they pray, let me pray. Let me pray too, right? <laughs> Am I telling the truth? Yeah. Come on yeah. now, let's be real. Let's be honest, <coughs> okay? So when you're around people who don't believe in the power of God, you adapt that. And you start saying, well, I'm just going to do it by the way you believe. Am I being honest? You are. So the scripture is telling us, don't, because the power of God is, is Jesus. Okay? Amen. The power of God is his spirit. Amen. Amen. He can do it, able and capable of doing all things. But if nothing will happen if you don't apply, what's that word? Faith. Faith. And it still doesn't mean he's going to do it at that moment. Or it still doesn't mean he's going to do it your way. He may be healing you over here of your heart. Amen? Amen? He may be getting rid of some things that happened a long time ago. He's healing the heart. heart. He is working, but not the way you can see, see yeah. it. Because we walk not by what? Sight. Sight, we walk by how? Right. So he's working on you, but it's not the way you thought it was going to go. That's right. Amen? Okay, but he is. Okay, I got something now? The, the power of prayer is very strong. Come on. You know, my daughter just had a baby, and... Uh, they had done a hearing test on the baby while on her right ear. So she had failed both the tests. And so she texted me, she said, Mom, I really need you to pray for Caitlin. She said, she's failing her hearing test. So as I'm going down the road, I'm praying, and I'm touching my right ear for God to heal her ear Amen. for whatever was going on. And the Holy Spirit was so strong in my vehicle. Ooh. I mean, it sent chills up and down my spine. And I knew that she was going, her ear was going to be healed. Uh, yeah. She texted me. She said, Grandma, your prayers worked. I passed her test. Amen. Amen. Can we give her a hand clap? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. How do we defeat the enemy? 
By the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. Power of the testimony. Power of the testimony. We're going to say it again. We're going we're gonna to know this, right? How do we overcome the enemy? The blood, the blood of the Lamb. Lamb. And, and the word of our testimony. That's why we tell our testimony. That's why we talk and tell our testimony. Amen. Because it helps us increase in what? Faith. 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 Here we go. I'm not just saying this, just be saying I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I already mean this. Amen? Amen. So Nehemiah is helping us. Yes, sir. I want to see you. Go ahead. The testimony is for the number one reason is they can't argue about what God's done for us. They don't see what God's done for us. So, so if you're out there preaching to them, a lot of times they're, well, this or that. But if you just give them your testimony, that's the strongest thing we can give. Nothing more powerful than what God's done in our life. And they can't say, well, that don't happen. I said, well, it happened for me. I mean, that's just as strong as it can say. There's nothing they can take away from our testimony. God gives us the testimony. That's right. Nothing can take it away. <coughs> And the word and the word of God is full of what? Testimony. 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 We can read Matthew, yes. Mark, Luke, and John, and Acts, and Romans, and First First Testimony. Corinthians, Second Corinthians, Galatians, and Ephesians, and Philippians, and Colossians. We can read all these what? Testimony. Testimonies. Amen. Okay. You Anybody never any? know, though. You never know how your testimony is going to help others. Yes. Because we're supposed to share it in what? Faith. Faith. That you ne that it's not for you to know who you may help. No. Believe it, it will help. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Anybody have anything else? This is good. I like this. Yeah, I hope I hope this is helping, encouraging us, build us up. It's not remember the word of God. Not for what? Not for condemnation. No, it's not. But what is for? Correction, inspiration, building in faith. Amen. Amen. But you got to read the word. Amen. I right. I'm encouraging you now. I'm encouraging. You. If you don't like me encouraging, I'm going to come in the middle and come close to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. Anybody else have anything to say? Yes. Go back to the Galatians. Okay. Chapter 1, verse 10. He's talking about compromising. It says in there, Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings, of, oh, that's human beings or of God? Or I am trying to please people? If I am still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. Yes. It's, it's, can we all go there, please? Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. Yeah. Uh, we're there. Amen. That's good. Amen. You're gonna read it again, your mind. <laughs> good stuff. I like. I, I mean, I, I'm like when we go to scripture that the Holy Spirit show you things. Okay. Galatians chapter, chapter one, one verse ten. ten. When you all there, please say amen. Amen. I want everybody to see and to hear what the Lord has just given him. That's why we're here in Sunday school. Remember, not the Justin Lee show, but it is the Jesus Christ show. Amen. 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 And he loves you as much as he loves me. Okay. Galatians. Chapter 1, verse 10. That's good. Okay. We we'll, we'll give these people time to time. All yours. <laughs> Galatians, chapter 1, verse 10. I think we all just found there. We're going to we'll give a few more, maybe three more seconds here. The woman to see it. Okay. Go ahead. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. We have to decide who we're trying to please. Are we putting the effort to please people or God? Which one we want to please the most? People or God? He didn't say both. He can give you favor. What's it? He can give you favor with people. people. But you have to choose which one you want to serve. If you want to please people, be a, a people pleaser, then he said you're not a servant of, of God. Christ. Mm -hmm. He can give you favor with man, Scripture says. But if you are a people pleaser, you can't serve Christ because you got to tell people repent. That's right. You got to tell people sin is. You got to tell people, you know, what you, you, went, you went away a little bit. May, may, I, may I share with you something, right? And you get that. What you got to do is a servant of Christ. Okay, it's hard to be a people pleaser and then tell them, uh, can I talk to you about something? That's not going to work out. I mean, not. But as a servant of Christ, he can give you favor to tell them. Amen? He can give you favor and open a, open, a, open a door so you can share and they will respect you and appreciate you and love you because you know why? Man, you told me the truth. I so appreciate that. Amen. Even though nobody would tell me, you did. That's right. You don't know how much I appreciate that. I have people who have said that before. 
And that's more valuable. Amen. Amen. More valuable. Yes, sir. you got something. I've been studying Galatians Amen. with the Lord, but uh, at the very end of it, if you go to Galatians, uh, the first Galatians at uh, 23, it says in there, if you read the whole story, it says, they only heard the report. The man who formerly persecuted <laughs> us is now preaching with the faith he wants to try to destroy it. And they praise God because of him. That's this right there. Anyone can be delivered, no matter who you are. Amen. Amen. I hear that. Do you, you got a hold of that? The same person who was against the church, the same person who was against it, he fought against it, he didn't do he, he despised it. That same person now, God has converted, and now he's a preacher of the gospel. Amen. Amen. So what does that tell us? All of us got hope? Yes. Is hope for everybody? Yes. Amen. That you can be a minister, a preacher of the gospel. It doesn't matter how you start, but it does matter how you finish. finish. Today, Try. each and every day, we say this to a young man, each and every day, listen, each and every day is the day, it's a day of salvation. It's a day of deliverance. Every day, not, not, not just someday we skip a day. No, no. Every day is a day for salvation. Amen. Amen. Because we all need saving from something. <laughs> we need to deliver from something. Every day, right? That's right. Okay. What's the call? Come to me. Who was the destroyer of the Jews? Yes. The compliment of the greatest apostles of the Bible. That's right. God touched. That's right. Can you touch him? You can touch all of us. I just don't want to get blind. <laughs> But he gave you sight back. <laughs> Amen. Let's go back to Nehemiah. Anybody have anything else? This is good. We know Galatians 1.10 ties in with Nehemiah. Because we're talking about when you compromise, uh, it breaches your wall. You're not setting boundaries. And the enemy comes in that way. So compromise is deadly. And we don't really realize it. Because Galatians talks about being a servant of Christ. Being a servant of Christ means you have to say no a lot. We don't like that because of the rejection that comes. So you see there's two types of people. A servant of Christ is the one that sets boundaries, has a, a wall built up that ties into Nehemiah. Then you see the compromise, the people pleaser, the one that doesn't want to say no, they want to say yes to everything. That also talks about in Nehemiah. And then Nehemiah also shows you the response you have to say. You have to be able to say no and prioritize. You have to say, I'm doing the work of God. This comes first. And then... I can do this later. Instead of doing the work of God and saying, well, let me stop the work of God because of people. If you put the people first, that's the compromise. That's how the enemy comes in. So you see that Galatians ties into Nehemiah because you see the compromise and what happens when you compromise. So you being a people pleaser and not a servant of God, you can't do both. That means you're going to have to choose. One of them requires you to say no a lot. One of them requires you to give in a lot. So there's a choice that you have to make and priorities and boundaries in that. Amen. Amen. If I have anything like to say, this is good. Good conversation. Good Sunday school. God is teaching us. Amen. Okay, the Lord is teaching us. If we read the last, uh, next verse, verse 4 in chapter 6. Uh, you might read that, please. Oh. You might 6 4. Yes, I see Okay. You see that? How many times they come and say the same thing? <laughs> Four times. Meaning, it's not going to be a one-time thing. It'll be over and over again. And you have to say the same response and tell them, no, I'm doing a great work. Right? Come on. Amen. I'm doing a great work. I can't do it. Number one, they come. They come again. Hey, come over. No. Listen, I'm doing a great work. I can't do this. Okay, here come a third time. They come again saying the same thing. You have to say, what? No. The same response. He said, no, I can't do this. I'm doing a great work for who? For the <clears throat> you're crazy. It's okay. Now here come the fourth time. The same thing. So you have to be consistent because they're consistent. Okay? So they're consistent to trying to get you to stop doing the work and you also got to be consistent also. Just to say, I can't do that. Why? Understand. Your prayer time is important. Yes. Yes. Your time to come to church is important. Important. It's a great work. 
Your Bible time is important. important. It's a great work. It's building your spirit and your soul and your relationship and it's doing work of the kingdom of God right now. Amen? Mm-hmm. And we have to sometimes say, No. I can't do that. Because I'm doing a great work. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, what time? What, 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 he is. He keeps coming back. We got about two minutes. What time? Okay, two minutes? Okay. Anybody have anything like to say? We're going to get two more oppositions and we'll be filming with Nehemiah. And I'm not going to read it a little bit. Two more oppositions. So let's go over it, and then we'll be able to be done for today. Remember, in the book of Nehemiah, they're doing the work of God. Let's be proud to do the work of God. To be excited that, you know what, I'm, I'm praying, I'm reading my Bible, I believe, right? It's okay. Be proud you're doing the work of God. But there's opposition. The enemy going to come two ways. The two ways. One way is through people. With people. Bodies. They don't know. They may not even know what they're doing. They're saying things wrong. The other way will be Thoughts. People without bodies. Thoughts. And you must take captive that thought to the obedience of Christ. Christ. Through the word. Amen. Amen. So opposition number one was people may talk about you, mock you. Mm-hmm. Number two, maybe threats on your life. Number three, through discouragement. Number four, you may have your own people may kind of mis- mistreat you a little bit. Number five, you may have compromise. I want you to compromise your word. Okay? That's five of them right there. We're going to finish the next two. But in every case, if you stand strong to the word, you will be what? Victorious. victorious. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Amen. You shall be victorious. You are more, this is the scripture, you are more than a conqueror, than a conqueror. through Christ. Christ that loves you. Amen? Amen. I hope you've been encouraged this morning. I hope Nehemiah, Nehemiah and 2 Timothy chapter 3. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 10, I hope all of them has helped us come to understand our role and position in Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. 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 Let me close in prayer. Brother George, will you close in prayer for us? Will you close in prayer for us?